Hello, I'm Martine Croxall in this episode of Extreme Weather. Australia hit by floods and drought at the same time. Eastern Europeans suffer in blizzards and record low temperatures. Southeast Africa pounded by successive tropical cyclones. And how extreme value theory is being used to predict major weather events. More than 100 people have died after Eastern Europe was hit by blizzards. Hospitals have been treating over a thousand patients for hypothermia and frostbite after temperatures dropped to minus 32 and a half degrees Celsius. Food and medical supplies have been airlifted into villages cut off by snow. Thousands of skiers were unable to get home from the Austrian resorts of Vorarlberg, Lech and Source. An avalanche buried a road near Strucken under three metres of snow. No one was hurt, but specially trained dogs were brought in to see if anyone had been trapped. In Australia, the two largest states have both been suffering from extreme weather, but in very different ways. Much of central Queensland was underwater after more than 200 millimetres of rain fell in just 24 hours. The Australian Bureau of Meteorology issued severe weather warnings as two of the country's main highways, the Flinders and the Landsborough, were submerged under two metres of flood water, cutting off access to the town of Mount Isa. Meanwhile, in Western Australia, residents in the southeast tourist resort of Margaret River were advised to leave their homes as bushfires swept through the area. The state has been sweltering in high temperatures. A record set in 1933 was almost broken when the state capital Perth endured three successive days at more than 40 degrees Celsius. Farmers in Argentina remain concerned about another drought only three years after record losses caused by scant rainfall. The country's agriculture ministry has already put aside nearly $120 million for an emergency fund to provide financial aid to small farmers who suffer the greatest losses. In the drought of 2008-2009, production of cereal crops fell by nearly 40%. The central state of Cordoba declared an agricultural emergency and although meteorologists say it's too early to know if this year's drought will be as bad, the abundant rains forecast for January failed to materialise. More than 25 people died and thousands were made homeless as southeast Africa was pounded by two tropical storms in quick succession. The southwestern Indian Ocean cyclone season produced cyclone Dando and cyclone Funso both of which were accompanied by torrential rain and high winds that swept across parts of Mozambique, Madagascar and Zimbabwe. Other casualties were thousands of cashew trees and hundreds of goats, pigs and sheep. Mozambique's National Meteorology Institute reported 200 km an hour winds and 10 metre high waves. Insurance companies, risk analysts and weather forecasters are all trying to better predict extreme weather events so we can minimise the human and financial costs. Many experts are turning to extreme value theory or EVT to make sense of what seem to be unstable weather patterns. So extreme value theory is a, is a statistical technique which allows us to characterise very rare events and even events that we may not have yet seen yet and that is very useful in terms of when we're building um, sea defences or infrastructure that needs to cope with extreme weather. So we can use extreme value theories, look at historical observations, and they will tell us how, uh, how high we need to build our sea defences or how, how big are our, our drainage systems to cope with, with heavy rainfall. In terms of climate change, we need to use these uh, methods to be able to look at not only how rare these individual events are, but also how they're going to change in the future. And extreme value theory allows us to do that. One thing that we're still struggling with, or still needing to, to, to cope with, is, is how you use extreme value theory to, to characterize events which not are just happening in one location, but have a sort of spatial extent like droughts. So how, how do the area changes, how the severity changes, and how their duration might change in the future. And this is a, a quite a big challenge uh, facing extreme value theory uh, in, in, in the future. That's all for this edition. Don't forget to let us know if you've got video footage of an extreme weather event in your neighbourhood and we'll feature it on a future episode.